Hi, it's the Bijou Juju Show, starring Woo! Mickey and Steve. Yay! <laughs> Woo! Anyway, uh, <laughs> I've been wanting to make this video since, gosh, when did we first learn about this place? Um, it about was, a year ago. Yeah, about <laughs> a year ago. I, I wanted to go to this place. It's called Singapore. Uh, it's a ghost town here in, in Michigan. Well, sort, sort of, of a ghost town. <laughs> no. um, I, I got it from a, a, a road trippers app, um, and we did a video on that one at one point. Uh, somewhere up here, I'll give you a link to that. Anyway, um, road tripper app said, yeah, ghost town. And I said, oh, wow, let's go see the ghost town. So we finally made it down there. <laughs> And uh, you'll see pretty much what we saw was nothing. There was a big green plaque in the middle of the town that was actually disappointing. <laughs> across the river from this place. Uh, but where the town actually was, there's n there's nothing there. It's been completely covered by sand dunes, and it's owned by private property. But you know, private people, you can't go private on. People. Well, whatever. You can't you can't go on there, and so. Um, we couldn't get any pictures. You, you can't. There's nothing to see. <laughs> um, but Singapore, I wanted to tell you a little bit about it. And I got my computer here, so I'm going to have sparkly things in my glasses and look like I'm a madman. But I'm not really. Well, sort of. Um, <laughs> Singapore, Singapore was established in, I think it was 1936. And uh, 1936, it was established. And um, it didn't last very long. It had a bunch of problems. In 19, uh, 1938, it had two banks, uh, the Allegan Bank and the Singapore Bank. Uh, both of them were under the wildcat kind of banks, which means that there was no federal regulations. People just threw up a bank and said, hi, I'm the bank of Bijou Juju, and you put your money in there, and if I... If I disappeared tomorrow, well, that was just tough beans because there was nothing. But anyway, so uh, Why would you use it? in the same year, uh, they were kind of put out of biz. Or No, that's not true. In 1938, they had over $50,000 in Singapore banknotes floating around. But um, it was near the end of the um, uh, Civil War. And regulations came in, and they said you had to have a third of the cash that you had banknotes floating around for. You had to have a third of the cash and in hand, and they didn't. So they were out. Um, then in uh, 1841, there was the 40-day blizzard. I didn't know about this. 40-day wow. blizzard that lasted 40 days. The people would have that starved to death. <laughs> people would have starved to death. But there was a shipwreck of the Milwaukee, it was the name of the ship, and uh, wow. it was just off the coast, just off the shore from where Singapore was, and they uh, took the food from the ship, and it kept the people alive during the blizzard. Did the, wait, was the ship shipwrecked? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, how Singapore finally died was, um, it, it was the going thing, <laughs> Uh, back then, uh, bigger than the town of Sagatuck, which is where we went to see the plaque. And um, it, it, what caused its demise is logging was its big deal. And I mean, logging in, in western Michigan was the thing. Well, all over Michigan. Yeah. And um, so logging was the thing. And they were one of the few in Michigan who had actually a... Um, a shipping line that would go across uh, the lake. And when the Chicago fire came, Singapore made a bundle. In the same, about the same time though, however, there was the Chicago fire, the Holland fire, and a place in Wisconsin that I had never heard of. Uh, Pes Peshtigo, I guess is how you say it. Peshtigo, anyway, uh, they had a big fire. And Manistee here in Michigan also had a big fire. And they cut down all the trees around to to keep their lumber mills going and to, to build these places up. Wow. And about the time that the business went, uh, you know, they didn't need any more wood. It was a good thing because there weren't any more trees. And so a lot of people moved out of town. Some moved across the river to the town of Saugatuck. 
and the town was slowly eaten up by the sand dunes of Lake Michigan. Well, they didn't have no trees, probably, to stop the wind. Well, right, and so it just wow. got buried. There was a story of one guy who refused to leave. He was the last one there. Don't know if the story is true. He <laughs> stayed there in his house and until he had to come and go out of the second story window because his, the whole first floor of his house was under the sand. <laughs> and and then after it got that high, I don't know, after they got out of that, or when it, when he got past that point, he decided that was it and he moved away. Well, anyway, that's Singapore. And uh, so I'll show you. And so here you go. We'll see you in a minute. This is Singapore back in the heyday. Just a quick shot of Sagatuck, which is where we came to see that Singapore sign. Lots of people, very few masks. Saw this cute little jag on the street. It's for sale. I was going to buy it, but Mick wouldn't let me. Uh, nearby in the town of Sagatuck, there was a house that had all these different animals and stuff out in the yard. All these statues. It was really kind of cool. I liked it. Um, and then right next door to that house, there was this cool old car that looked like it should have bank robbers in it. We just stumbled across this place. It's called the Felt, I think, F-E-L-T mansion. Kind of an interesting place. Really nice, nice fountain. Pretty cool. This sign, you can stop the video and read it if you want. The place has been all kinds of things. A seminary, a nunnery, a prison, a state police post. The thing that they didn't tell you is that he made his money by making basically the first con uh, computer or a calculator ever. It was called the computator. Uh, and that's uh, how he made his bucks, is by making the computator. He built the place for his wife. She managed to live there for six months before she died. He only lived there two years before he died. Too bad, huh? <laughs> Hi, we're back. And Mick's going to do this last part because I talked all through the first part. <laughs> the haunted house? <laughs> the, yes, tell them about the haunted house. The place at the end that you will see, Mick has this big announcement to tell it's you. It's not a big announcement. We just thought, we went to, you, you'll hear the story, or they already did hear the story, right? <laughs> Anyways, the people that died there, the lady that died there, their uh, um, house decorator came in to restore all the original stuff to make sure, because it was so many things. So they restored it back to the original way it was when the, the um, what were their names? Felts. Felts? Felts owned it. And um, the one of the decorators that was there, she worked a lot by herself looking at the rooms and everything. And she several times supposedly evidently saw, what was the lady's name? Mrs. Felt, anyway. Yeah, I forget her name. Up in her... Um, what was her room, her bedroom, and I think her, um, like study or something anyways and she's seen her apparition and she swears that she saw it and different things had happened during the time so anyway so this october for halloween i they're allowing 10 people or so i don't know so many people coming in to rent rooms to stay the night to see what they may see on halloween so you or can not. see mrs Felt or here walking the halls <laughs> holding her head in her hand <laughs> Well, she probably didn't hold her head in the hand, but I don't no, know. No, she didn't. No. <laughs> anyway, okay, well, this is, you know, we talked a whole long time, and you got to see a little bitty video, so. Yeah. See Bye. you next time. Bye-bye.